Hey, it's Brooks, Access Control Expert with AccessControlForum.com. We're here with Brian and BD Loops. Uh, he's going to explain to us some of the products that he has, including installation tools, the preformed loops, and the sealant that they have. So, Brian, if you could do us a favor and just start us off with the uh, preformed loop, that's what I'm most interested in. So, tell us why I would want to do a preformed loop as opposed to spending the time putting the three loops of wire, two loops of wire in the in the ground. Sure, and a lot of people don't aren't aware that a preformed loop exists. Now we have a preformed saw cut, which is different than a preformed direct burial loop. Now the preformed saw cut loop is one that's already a set size loop with a set length of lead in. And the biggest advantage that we have here is that it's jacketed. So a jacketed loop is going to hold up a lot better in cracked up asphalt than the hand wrap loops, which only have the insulation layer as the protective area. Now, the big advantage here too is the loop's preformed, so you don't have to wrap anymore. You don't have to spend time twisting the loop lead-in. In fact, our loop lead-in isn't twisted. It fits in the exact same size width cut as our loop is. So that's less cutting, that's less loop sealant you got to use. So I know you have a lot of tech support on your website, but you just told us something that uh, a lot of installers need to know um, or, or may not think about and mm -hmm. that they need to know. So uh, first of all, that's a, a great point on the um, being uh, having the, the jacket around the actual insulation. Mm -hmm. So it's more protection. But what about the guy who says, well, uh, shouldn't the uh, lead in loop, uh, lead in wire should be twisted? Yeah, yeah, so that, that's a really big controversial topic. And the whole reason why the lead-in wires get twisted is to prevent movement of the wire. Now, we jacket our wires, so it completely prevents that movement. And the big advantage there is now they're not doing a double wide cut. Um, so with ours, it's just one cut for the loop and lead-in. So you're saving time having to do yeah. more turns. So in theory, that's 66% less time if you're doing three turns. Mm -hmm. and uh, you possibly saving money on sealant and or backer rod mm -hmm. and the labor, which is the most important part of doing all that. Yes. Okay, great. So that's uh, this. what you call this your preformed? Preformed saw cut loop. Because we make two different cut. types of preformed loops, a preformed saw cut and a preformed direct burial loop. Show us that. Uh, so this is our preformed direct burial loop and this is to be used in any new construction application. Okay. So new concrete, new asphalt, gravel roads, dirt roads, pavers, uh, that sort of thing. And um, it's a flat cable, rated for direct burial use, has a jacketed lead-in, also rated for direct burial use too. Um, the lead-in should be run through conduit all the way up to the yoke. And the yoke is where it transitions from the loop to the lead-in. Okay. And uh, it's a really inexpensive way to add a lot of protection to the loop. And this is kind of our flagship product that a lot of people know us for, is the direct burial loop. Um, and this is what came out 17 years ago when I started the company. And uh, the saw cut has been around for about uh, eight, ten years at this point. So is this a half inch female coupling on here? Yes. Gotcha. So uh, this is obviously for demonstration purposes. Yeah. But it's going to come with a longer lead. Definitely. And the, and the lead Definitely. Gets, the lead so, gets terminated inside. So, so this is what the, the actual preformed direct burial loop looks like. And it has either a 40, 60, or 100 feet of lead-in as a standard size uh, for the, the lead-in length. And we have loop sizes for both our direct burial and saw cut that are anywhere between 12 for like a small lane, maybe with barrier arm or a drive through lane, all the way up to a 6x20 for a 24 foot wide slide gate. Of course, we can make um, loop sizes of any size. If you've got a 40 foot wide opening, we can make custom loops and ship them out same day um, through any of our distributors all throughout the U.S. and Canada. One of the things I appreciate is the tech support that you have on the website, and they have instructions uh, for those on the website as well, too. And of course, mm -hmm. they come with the instructions already in the manual. So if you haven't done it before, um, some people either do always do it or, or never do it. And if you've never done it, they'll have the instructions to do it. And it's not it's, a, it's uh, less time and less money with materials, so it's not like it's going to be that much harder. You just need no. to know No, and that's the one of the people thing about preform loops is they don't need to worry about number of turns or being within the total inducti inductive range of a detector module and micro henrys when you buy a bd loop you know it works it has the proper number of turns you know it's it's good out of the bag um, so for new installers looking to get more into access 
our loops are the solution for that easy. Which is good to know because when you know the size of the loop, you don't have to have somebody out there that understands the number of turns. Mm -hmm. It's already done because you know the size before it's actually shipped to the property. Exactly. Well, that's cool. Um, so you not just only sell the loops, but you sell the tools to install it. So I see Correct. a backer rod roller and then I see loop sealant. Tell us about the two different loops, loop sealants that you have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so let's talk about the tools. Um, so let's we'll start off here with our blades. So all of our loops are designed around a 3 16 inch wide cut. And that's why we offer a 3 16 inch wide blade. blade 3 16 inch blades are harder to find. Um, if you go to big box stores, they only sell them either in an eighth or a quarter. Now an eighth inch wide cut is simply too small. It doesn't allow enough clearance to properly flow and encapsulate. Whereas a 3 16 inch wide cut um, is a little bit bigger, but it allows the sealant to properly flow and encapsulate the wire. In fact, you can see here, this is one of our displays that shows an eighth inch wide cut where you have the sealant trying to flow and get down around the top turn, but what ends up happening is air pocket forms in here. And so now when the wires could potentially move, it can result in false detections or water gets in here, saturate the wires and causes a short to ground. Or when water freezes, it can push this loop right up out of the groove and then you have issues. Now, I mentioned our product's designed around a 3 16 right? Okay. That's the optimal size. If you use our product or if you hand wrap loops. If you're using a quarter, that's 25% bigger than what a 3 16 is, which means 25% more sealing you got to use. So it's the optimal width for saving material and for reducing the cutting time and so on. So do you have a different sealant for with and without back rod? Explain to me what the difference between the sealants are. Sure, so, so this, is, this is your everyday sealant. This is a single part polyurethane. Now polyurethane is a moisture cure material. So um, that means it cures based off of the humidity in the air. And uh, the advantage there is if air gets into the tube, it doesn't matter. It matters if humidity or uh, moisture gets in here. Okay. So if you only use half the tube, you can cap it off to uh, prevent the rest of the tube from hardening. Right. Now, um, the design of the tip is, is really crucial here. So the tip allows you to apply the sealant from inside the groove rather than from on top, which means since you're inside, you can seal in just one pass. Um, now this does come in either gray or black, and uh, it covers about 20 feet of perimeter okay. for a loop. So, so like a standard four by eight, for example, mm -hmm two tubes will get you by. Obviously, a bigger loop may need a little bit more. And of course, this is using our calculation of a 3 16 inch wide cut, inch and a quarter depth. Gotcha. And with this, our loops, of course. And this is with or without back or rod? Um, with our loops, you don't need to use back or rod. That's one of the benefits of it because the jacket acts as a built-in back or rod. So if somebody wraps their own loops and still wants to use your sealant because of the cool tip and because mm -hmm. it's going to last longer, uh, do you recommend with or without back or rod? Um, whenever you hand wrap a loop, you should use back or rod. Gotcha. And, um, and that is going to obviously reduce the amount of sealant you need. Um, but be careful because sealant is a thick material and running back or rod throughout the entirety of the loop makes it so that you cannot get full encapsulation of the wires, okay. which in warm climates, that may not be that big of a deal, but in uh, cold weather applications where there will be an air pocket down in there for water to eventually find its way down in there, that's how it will get pushed up out of the groove. Gotcha, because the water will freeze exactly. and expand. Okay. But, but uh, spe speaking of uh, cold weather, we do have a winter blend loop sealant, um, and, th and that's this product here. Um, this isn't in its packaging, but this is an empty tube. It is a polyurethane. It looks like an epoxy, um, but it's actually a polyurethane. That's important because polyurethane retains its flexibility and its adhesion to the walls, um, so it gives you a better proper seal. Um, now, it does fit in a two-part delivery method, so you use a two-part gun. If you already have an epoxy gun, it will fit into that, um, but the, the color of this is a dark gray and uh, that's kind of like a color of aged asphalt, for and, example. And that's what it is, just that's the only color you got? For the two-part loop two sealant. Part, for, for the single single part loop sealant, it comes in gray or black. Gotcha. And, Are there uh, any custom colors available, or that's just the two main? That's, that's really that's the two main, yeah. Uh, gray for concrete, black for asphalt. Now, we do have some tricks on our website that if you need to match the color of the surface, mm -hmm. um, you can get uh, colored sand and sprinkle it over the sealant while it's still wet. And uh, what, what that will do is make it so that it blends into the surface. Okay. What's the shelf life of this tube and what's the shelf life of the tube? One part? year. One year. Yeah, both from manufacture date, which each tube has it printed on there and on each case as well. Gotcha. Uh, so that handles uh, the loop sealant. Why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about one of our most 
uh, time consuming, our most expensive, our most uh, uh, pain in the butt thing that we all go through as installers. How do you uh, help us test loops? What products do you have? Yeah, so we have two different testing devices. Um, we have a Easy Checker, which is a device that tests everything upstream from the loop. So it doesn't directly test the wire in the ground. What it actually tests is the detector module and the connection point between the uh, detector module and the loop, so either the board or the harness wire kit. So if you want to use this device to test the loop, what you do is you disconnect the loop that's currently installed, plug this in replace of that loop. If this light illuminates, that means the loop is being energized by the board, so I can illuminate either the board or the harness wire to punch a problem in my circuit. After if you've, it's not lit. Mm -hmm. oh, gotcha. After you've reset the detector module and you push this button, it's the same thing as a vehicle driving over a loop. And so if this is an exit loop, it should open the gate, for example. If I hold it down and it's a reversal loop, it should hold the gate open. And see, by just doing those two simple tests, I now know it's not the detector module, it's not the board or harness wiring. What's the only other piece of the circuit? The wire on the ground, right? right? And then that's where you can get a megometer out. Now, a megometer is an electrician's tool. It's a uh, device used to test insulation. Insulation is the coating around the copper of the loop. And um, if you have exposed copper, rather than the loop completing the circuit, it will leak out to ground. And if the circuit isn't being completed, the gate locks open into a fail-safe mode, right? And that often happens when it rains. So you have a nick in the wire somewhere, water gets into the groove, and then it causes a short to ground. Yeah. This will check for that. So it, uh, uh, um, is this something that they can buy off your website? Um, not off our website, but through any of our distributors. All of our products are distributed through our distributors only. Well, that's good to know for installers that yeah. they're not competing with us out in the field. Mm -hmm. That's great. Uh, is this a soldering iron? I think this is the only thing oh, you're yeah. trying to hide from me. <laughs> it is. Uh, okay. This this is just a, a, a good tool. It's actually a micro torch. Oh, okay. So it's butane power, which means if you need to solder out in the field, you have no access to uh, a plug or power, this is a good alternative to that. that um, for your lead-in wire? For tinning or soldering your lead-in wires up into your operator to prevent oxidation or to secure a better connection. Um, now, the, uh, how this works is you have to set it to a continuous blast um, in which then it takes about one or two minutes for this to heat up and at that point it can now melt solder. But the good thing is the flared base because when you're trying to solder wires, you need as many hands as you can get. So you can set this on, a, on the ground or the curb, which leaves your hands free to now work with your wires and your solder to make your tinned or solder connection. And you're not just using it for loops, you can use it for anything. Uh, really, it's, right. Is this something it's a torch. That, that you guys have under your own brand name and sell through a distributor, or is this go to This is just a tool you can supply? get it anywhere. It's more to promote um, that you should tin your wires or solder your connections, uh, although we do offer it through our distributors um, if you just want to get it through them as well. All right, is there any products that we uh, missed that we should have talked about? You know, I, I do want to hit one more thing on the loop sealant. All right, cool. Which, uh, yeah, the, the, the big thing about the two-part loop sealant is a winter blend. It can be used in cold yeah, weather. Time. It is winter. a winter blend. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so if you're ever installing loops in cold temperature, this is your solution for that. Yeah. When used in warm weather, it hardens in 10, 15 minutes. Oh, wow. So if you have an application you have to open a plane right away, mm -hmm. this is the good one to do that with. Yeah, for a uh, construction product that's a project that's already done and they don't want anybody tracking through there. You got to open it up for the traffic or they got deliveries later in the day or maybe you even have rain expected over the next few days. You don't want water mixing in with your loop sealant. This is a really good product for that. For reference, single part loop sealants usually take about three hours to skin over but several days for a full cure. And if you, water mixes in with that during that curing process, it's going to mess with your seal. And that's 15 minutes to cure or 15 minutes to use? Um, warm weather only, so it's 15 minutes to cure gotcha. in warm weather. The colder it is, the longer it does take to cure, but it will cure chemically in cold weather, whereas right. other sealants won't. Well, Brian, I totally appreciate it. Uh, loops are one of the things that can really cost you a lot of money and warranty calls if they're not done right. So having the ability to you tell us how to test it and having the equipment to do it is appreciated. If you, don't, uh, if you haven't done it already and you get a chance and you want some more technical support, including white papers, you guys have all that stuff on your website. Yeah, What's it's, the website? It's uh, bdloops.com. The section you'd want to reference is called Education More. It's a bright yellow tab at the top of the page. Um, it covers topics about loops and power lines, snow melt systems, um, when you replace loops, what you're supposed to do. 
Um, just just a lot of good content on there. And some myth busting as well, too. Oh, yes. That's the favorite part. Twisting Leaden is on there as yeah. well. Air Pockets, a lot of those kinds of things I get are on it. I still, people to this day are training us to, do, to mm -hmm. twist in uh, the Leaden wires. And unfortunately, it's just a misnomer. A lot of people think it's actually the purpose is to cancel a signal such as a balanced wire, which is it's not. It's not a differential pair. It's just one wire, one signal. Um, and then the other thing is, does it actually even matter, considering that you're having to put an extra five to 10 minutes into do each loop to the yeah, system. Yeah. So we appreciate that information. Uh, so just know that if you guys ever need help with any loop related question, our product or not, I am available either through email or you can call me directly on my cell. Yes, I, I give my cell number out all the time. Um, so you guys need to call me, it's 714-334-6978. Any loop related question, Brian Dixon, I'm the president of BD Loops. So whether it's your product or not? Yeah, I'll help you out. Gonna get a lot of phone calls. <laughs>